Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Cowboys trade four dog pits urged by Dez. For the entirety of his notable Dallas Cowboys career, when Dez Bryant spoke, I listened and took notes. In his post-NFL career, Dez remains a notable presence albeit on social media, where he is presently making waves by ripping the Atlanta Falcons for wasting the gifts of unicorn tight end Kyle Pitts. And by urging on a wished-for connection between Pitts, the number four pick in the 2021 NFL draft out of Florida, and Dez's beloved America's team. To this point, with Kirk Cousins as his QB, Pitts, who plays tonight on Thursday Night Football versus the visiting Tampa Bay Bucks in a key NFC South showdown, has caught just eight passes for 105 yards through four games, a continuation of his non-usage over the course of four pro seasons. Enter my guy Bryant, who opines that Pitts is being misused and that a trade to the Cowboys would change everything. It's hard to be great at anything if you are not featured, Atlanta is not the place for Kyle Pitts said Dez, poking at the Falcons before turning his attention to a Dallas solution. He would be a dog in the Cowboys' offense. The stats say Bryant's point about Pitts in Atlanta has merit. But he loses me on seeing Dallas as a place that is any more equipped than a couple dozen other NFL cities to better utilize Pitts. In this case, by the way, the Cowboys and their blow-it-up cap plans are only a slight obstacle. Pitts is still on his cheap rookie contract and the fifth-year option on Pitts for 2025 pays him $10.5 million, a bargain for some team that could smartly turn him into a superstar pass catcher. The Cowboys signed who? The Dallas Cowboys signed a player, but it is not who fans thought the team would sign. Two defensive players went down with injuries, so more players were needed, but the player signed is an unknown product. Most Dallas Cowboys fans know Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence are out for a few weeks with injuries. Parsons could miss two to four weeks with a high ankle sprain, and Demarcus Lawrence was put on injured reserve with a right foot sprain, which means he is gone for at least four weeks. These players' injuries only add more issues to the already lousy defense. The front office loves finding hidden gems and hopes the latest addition will revitalize the pass rush. Fans also know not to hold their breath when the front office makes a move for relatively unknown players. The relatively unknown player is K.J. Henry, who was on the Cincinnati Bengals practice squad. The Cowboys signed him to a two-year deal to come over and help. At worst, K.J. Henry can come in and give a warm body to the rotation that now consists of Marshawn Neeland, Chauncey Galston, and Carl Lawson. This defensive end rotation should not frighten quarterbacks, but it may be serviceable, and K.J. Henry may bring some unknown skills. Henry was selected in the fifth round by the Washington Commanders in 2023 from Clemson. During his rookie season, he trained under Jeff Scanina, who is currently the defensive line coach for Dallas. Henry thinks his experience with Scanina can benefit Dallas because he understands what the coach expects from his players. Henry racked up 19 tackles and 1.5 sacks during his time in Washington. However, despite his efforts, he didn't make the final cuts and eventually found himself in Cincinnati. K.J. Henry did pretty well at Clemson but didn't quite meet expectations. He made 123 tackles and 13.5 sacks. He was good at swatting down passes at the line of scrimmage, knocking away 11 balls during his career, with six of them in his senior year. K.J. Henry has the potential to be a good player, and according to his draft profile from 2023, he has a few traits that can help this defense. Henry is 6 feet 4 inches, 255 pounds, and ran a 4.6340 yard dash at the NFL Combine. He should be stronger and faster now that he has been in the NFL for two years. His draft profile said he has a solid get-off, is a good run defender who gets physical at the point of attack, and his arm length and extension help him get off blockers. If he is just a practice squad guy for other teams, the negatives have to outweigh the positives. So here are the negatives. 
several areas need improvement. He struggles to get underneath blockers and doesn't effectively fill gaps in run defense. He relies on physicality but leaves open rushing lanes inside. His hands are active but inaccurate when rushing the passer, and he has difficulty defeating blockers with them, limiting his pass-rushing abilities. Additionally, he lacks the strength and power to win as a bull rusher and doesn't have a consistent go-to move for pass rushing in the NFL. The rushing techniques and hand placement could improve with the help of coach Greg Ellis, known for his exceptional technique when rushing quarterbacks in the NFL. If Greg Ellis can teach this kid some moves, which is a big if, the Cowboys may have a weapon. However, the extensive list of negatives associated with K.J. Henry could point to another player not worth a roster spot. Adding K.J. Henry at this point in the season could be as minimal as someone filling the roster due to injuries. Maybe the front office did some good research and saw something in this player that could help in the long term. A team cannot have too many pass rushers, and having a stable of young guns to pin their ears back could pay off. Hopefully, Will McClay can pull a rabbit out of his hat with K.J. Henry, and the string of finding diamonds in the rough can continue. The Dallas Cowboys defense needs all the help it can get, and the fans need something exciting to be excited about. Let's be optimistic, watch the Cowboys play down several players, and cheer for the young men who get to prove they belong. If they don't belong, a high draft pick is coming, and that alone can change the franchise's fortunes. Or, at the very least, make Jerry's fortune grow. Stephen Jones says Devontae Adams' trade would be a long putt with team's cap challenges. The Cowboys signed C.D. Lamb to a four-year, $136 million deal as their number one receiver in August. They have no interest in paying another star receiver $983,333 in salary each week plus $30,000 for each game and he's on the active roster for half a season, which, under his current contract, is what Devontae Adams would cost. Reports that the Cowboys have contacted the Raiders or have interest in Adams are not true, as PFT reported Wednesday. Cowboys executive vice president Stephen Jones confirmed that in an interview with San Antonio Sports Star. No, I don't think there is anything to that, Jones said of the rumors about Adams. We just signed our number one guy, and Adams is a number one receiver. When you have the challenges cap wise that we have, that would be a long putt for us. In addition to signing Lamb, the Cowboys signed quarterback Dak Prescott to a four-year extension last month that averages a record $60 million per season. They will have to sign edge rusher Micah Parsons to an extension after this season. So, most of the roughly $24 million the Cowboys have under the cap for his season they will roll over to next season. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Devontae Adams? Leave your opinion in the comments.